Good morning, everybody. My name is John Gravel. I'm Vice President of Lessman Instrument Company, and I head up our gas detection and analytics group. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us for today's session about a very powerful new gas detection technology from Honeywell. First, we had point detection. Uh, we relied on a gas getting to the placement of the detector. The next iteration and innovation was the open path detector, and we moved from a point to a line. Now we actually have added a third dimension. We have a technology that allows us to visualize, quantify a gas size, a gas leak in terms of its size, shape, and scale. During today's session, we're gonna learn about the basic prim principles of gas cloud imaging, the difference between this technology and traditional gas detection sensors and methods, how exactly GCI is used to monitor and quantify gas leaks. Uh, we'll have a discussion about how visualizing gas leaks improves safety and reduces operator workload. And then at the end, we're going to have uh, time for Q&A. Regarding the questions and answers, everybody should have a question panel on their uh, GoToWebinar box. If you want to just type those questions in, we'll, we'll come off at the end of this presentation and uh, address and answer those. Our speaker today is Jane Huggins. Jane is the Senior Account Manager with Honeywell. She's been supporting customers in the process industry for 14 or 15 years. The last two years, she's been focused with Rebellion Photonics helping develop the technology for gas cloud imaging systems. We welcome Jane as our featured speaker. Thank her for sharing her time and expertise with us. Jane, if you could please help us understand this new technology. Thanks a lot, John, and thanks everyone for joining. Um, you know, like John said, I welcome questions. So if you do have questions, be sure and notate them so you don't forget. And we'll go through those at the end of the presentation. So a little bit about um, Honeywell and Rebellion. Hang on, I'm trying to move my screen here. There we there go. As a quick glance, and then current offerings for gas detection, but really the bulk of the presentation is going to be on the gas cloud imaging system. And so we'll get detailed into that and what the exact offerings are surrounding that imaging system. So prior to Honeywell buying Rebellion back in December, um, these were the Rebellion client lists here. Um, so Honeywell did purchase us in December of last year, and it was very exciting. So they've already come in and done a whole Six Sigma operation on our manufacturing floor. Uh, we've streamlined our manufacturing because of that, and we're able to get builds out instead of four months. We've got it down to 30 days. So very exciting. It was um, still is exciting around the Rebellion office going from about 30 person company to uh, up to 50 people sometimes with from Honeywell inside of our offices. So our office is downtown Houston, just right on the east side of downtown. And that's where we have all of our FATs for um, prior to project SATs, so site acceptance tests. Again, as John mentioned, uh, we had in the past single point gas sensors and open closed path line detectors. About 80% of Rebellion's installs are because either single point gas sensors or open closed path line detectors missed a detection and an incident occurred, unfortunately. And so the clients go out looking for something more and they come across our technology. So it's an excellent supplemental technology to these um, original gas detection so with single point gas sensors, you know, again, we're waiting on it to cross that sensor and sometimes wind or environmental conditions can hinder it from doing what we predicted it's going to do. And with open closed path line detectors, we know we have a leak, but we cannot identify the source. And our technology covers both of these different aspects. So it is an entire system. It's not just a camera. I wonder if everyone can see. I can't, I'm gonna yeah, X out of it. 
Jane, it shows. Is this box showing on the right? This go to webinar? Yeah, you can okay. actually I'm, I'm gonna find it down there. Okay. So it is a whole platform. So we have the camera system that you see on the left with the pan tilt unit that allows the camera to move. In the middle, you see the alarm management software interface. So this is where you get all your alerts, alarms, summary images and detection videos into this alarm management software interface that resides on a DVR. And then on the right, you have the physics enhanced artificial intelligence. And so these are the analytics that are helping drive our speciation with the gas types. And also we are looking at fire and intrusion detection coming out late this year, early next year. We always like to start with this video. It really shows the power of our camera system and the clarity of the image. So in this scenario, this is a site acceptance test at one of our sites, a gas processing unit at the end of a pipeline. And the camera is a kilometer away from this release and we popped a two meter cube balloon of methane. So you can see the visual image, how powerful it is. You know it's a gas leak because of the colorful image. And you can also see the trajectory of the plume. So we've had many of our clients uh, relieved. The operators feel relieved because they're able to lead in the first responders away from where the gas is leaking and they know where it's going by visually seeing it. This was a video sent to us from one of our sites. And if you can see here, this is a guy down here doing a routine filter change. So he is wearing a monitor and there are point sensors all in this area as well. So they sent us this video and said, thank you for saving our lives because it's alarming that it's methane but they told us that there's 15% H2S in this video. So a couple of breaths of that and that guy would not be here. Um, it also, when the video continues, the gas actually goes down in the gravel area. So this client is redoing all of their procedures in this area based on this one captured video from our system. A little more specifically on the cameras. So this is our larger of the two cameras. It's called the standard. And just to give you an idea, this weighs about 250 pounds. And this can run in two different modes. It runs in a long range mode, which can detect out to 1700 meters. So a mile out. And then it can also run in a wide field mode, which has a wider field of view and that can detect out to 660 meters. So you see the visual camera up top here and that is what we're using for the artificial intelligence to detect fire and intrusion. And then the hyperspectral imaging sensor is here where we are detecting the gas and that's our patented technology. And we can run uh, seven different analytics on each camera. So you can do seven different gases, you can do five gases and fire and intrusion. So any mix of analytics um, you can do per camera. And you see the pan tilt unit here. So we are able to turn 180 by 180, so virtually 360 degrees and we can tilt 45 degrees. So we can cover quite a large area. This is our mini camera. So this one weighs about 50 pounds, but uh, it's the same camera. So here's the visual lens and here's the hyperspectral camera and it can detect out to a hundred meters. But besides that, it is pretty much the same camera. 
We also, because this one is usually used for offshore or explosion proof areas, we have an explosion proof option available for this one if you're looking to go inside a, a classified area. So Rebellion's goal is really to remove people out of the hazardous areas. So instead of sending people out with snippers to find out if there is a leak, one, and two, where it is, we can visually see that there is a leak, and two, we can see where it's coming from. So you can set up our screen so that when you're looking at a specific spot, it can tell you where it's looking. So you will know exactly what area of the facility that leak came from. Also, we do not false alarm on steam or fog. So all of our cameras are only set up to detect the gas that it's set up for. So if you want to detect methane and ethane, your camera will only see methane and ethane. So our false alarm rate is very, very low. Um, once we get fire and intrusion into the same camera system, we're really going to enable clients to reduce costs on cabling by running to all the different systems. You will only have to run to one single camera unit. And on the OPEX side, all of our systems are military grade hardware. They're built to last at least 10 years. Uh, we have some running in the field for seven and we think they're gonna last a lot longer than that. And sorry about the doorbell. These days we work from home and it's not <laughs> as, definitely not as seamless as the office. <laughs> um, so uh, really saving on OPEX by the hardware and also um, all of our systems are self calibrating. And when you get a detection, there's no need to replace pieces and parts. These are our lists of gases that we can detect. And you see the different columns. Uh, so the first column that you see is established gases. And those are gases that we have running on facilities today. In the middle column, you have customs and mixtures. And so those are specific custom mixtures that we have provided for client mixtures. And then the theoretical are gases that we know we can detect because of their absorption signature, but we haven't been able to test them either because of the vol volatility of them or uh, just not getting a chance with clients having access to those, to those gases. And I can send this presentation so you can um, have this list. We'll actually have this posted on our website, Jane. Perfect. This is another image again showing the power of our gas cloud imaging so really you can see it is not steam or fog it is gas on the left a traditional ir camera you might be confused especially in a refinery or chem plant where there's a lot of steam or fog going on you know do i really have a gas leak our images are very clear in that way so how our hyperspectral imaging technology actually works. So we use black body radiation as our light source. So we can work equally as well day or night. We don't need a light source. And what happens is we calibrate our camera to the background of the different images and field of views that we are looking at. And so once a gas cloud passes through that calibrated image, we are able to detect its absorption signature and alert on those. So we actually have 12 different lenses detecting gas in our system. And two of the 12 have to match up on a detection before we send an alarm 
to the system. And again, reiterating how we don't false alarm on steam. Um, you can see that how different steam's absorption signature is here than, than methane and ammonia. And so we have our patent in the long wave infrared section, in infrared section, which is eight and 15 microns. So most infrared cameras are going to detect between four and eight microns. So you can see how similar the absorption signatures are there. And then when you get to the long wave infrared spectrum, all the signatures get very different. So again, it is a complete system. Um, you have the hardware on the left, the software on the center, the sensing analytics on the middle there, and then on the right, we also offer the custom installation, integration, and training. So when a client engages us, we do a site assessment and we tell them exactly where the camera will go to detect those different gases. And then we're able to offer the entire project package with installation being at the end. We can also integrate to your DCS or SCADA by Modbus. So when we do the site assessment, we give back a document that looks similar to this. So you can see each different area that the camera will monitor the different gases that the client has specified. So here you have several different cameras and we actually give the field of views for each of those cameras, the areas it will cover, and what it will monitor. This is what the software interface looks like. So on the left here, you have the event log panel. And what's stored in here are the summary images, the videos of detections, the successful calibrations, and the system pings. So we have an internal checks to ensure the health of the system. And those pings are also saved in this event log panel. <clears throat> so you can see the visual images up top. So you have the visual camera on the left and the infrared camera on the right. So these are your 24 by seven real-time monitoring panels. On the bottom is a scan path, is a still capture of, of the scan path of the camera. So this camera in this instance is set up for three different field of views. So you have each box, the camera sits and stares for 10 or 15 seconds and moves on to the next box. You can change how long it sits at one field of view. So it can be 10 or 15 seconds, or if you're more concerned with this tank area back here, you could have it sit at the tank area for one minute and then move over to these for 10 or 15 seconds. But it does need to dwell at one spot for 10 or 15 seconds. It can also just sit and stare at one field of view if you do not want the camera to move. You can have that option as well. We have a client who has an ammonia rail load off platform where they had an incident occur. And so they have a camera just sitting and staring at the ammonia rail load out platform 100% of the time. Um, in the event log panel, um, you can have either summary images or videos. And it's dependent on your field of view. Oops, sorry. I don't know why that switched. 
it's dependent on your field of view thresholds, whether you get a summary image or a video. So each field of view, you set the threshold of a detection. If it's below the threshold, it's an alert and you will get a summary image. If it's above the threshold, it's an alarm and you'll get a one minute video and then you will get an alarm on this panel. And also if you're um, connected to your DCS or SCADA system, that alarm will go there as well. This is what the software looks like in real time. So you can see again, the top two images are your real time images and the bottom is a still capture of the entire scan path of the camera. So this is another site acceptance test and you'll see when they release the gas, the alarm bar goes across the top, the video is logged on the left, and the gas is selected out of the list of gases over here on the right. So I'll let that play through again so you can see. Um, but you'll also notice how quick it is to pick up the gas release. So it's within seconds. And we're working with Honeywell um, to also be able to integrate these images direct onto the HMI. So hopefully we will have an API feed to where these real time monitoring views can go direct to your DCS or SCADA system instead of just an alarm link. This is another client site, and so they required this camera to monitor this tank farm area um, because back behind there is a residential area, and they were getting complaints of gas leak smells uh, from those residences. So they put one of our cameras here on this tower to monitor the entire tank farm. Um, I also like to use this image because you can see a typical setup of our camera. So it does need to be higher than the area it's monitoring. So you can see this was a purpose-built tower. We've also been put on communications towers and other rooftops, other higher areas in facilities. This is also a lot of times why we don't do flare monitoring because we would need to be so high to do the flare monitoring. And this is a pinhole leak caught with our mini. Again, the clarity of the image, the aspect of knowing the concentration and the full capacity of the leak. So a lot of this image you would miss if you were using a point sensor or something or another technology for gas leaks. The very first video I showed was a site acceptance test at this gas processing unit right here. So this is a great visual image of how far away we were from the gas leak. So this is where our camera is, this black arrow down here. And that was how far that gas leak was. <clears throat> we are also using this same camera where this black arrow is to monitor five kilometers of pipeline. So you can see in the image up here above, we have about 28 different field of views that the camera is rotating through to monitor all five kilometers of this pipeline. <clears throat> Takes about four minutes for our camera to circle back around and start back on its scan path again for this installation. 
A lot of times we get questions on how our system does in windy conditions. So we took it out to the beach and our camera is 1500 meters from the release. And you can clearly see it going across the beach here. Um, it also again shows how you know exactly the trajectory of the plume and could lead in first responders away from that. These are images showing how our system does in fog. So you can see as the fog gets heavier, the lighter areas of the image dissipate, but you're still able to detect the gas release in the more concentrated areas. <clears throat> so these are images that we've recorded at different times and showing all the same gas, fire, and intrusion all on one camera. So this left image here was testing completed with Total uh, in Lac, France, and they had about 20 different vendors out uh, with their methane detection systems, and we were basically competing to see who could get visual images on, on the releases the best. Um, so that was one of the images we captured there. And then in the center here is our fire analytic. And so we do testing with the Houston Fire Department. And when they start fires for training, we bring our camera system out and we ensure that it detects fire. Because it's an AI application, we're able to train it to not false alarm on welding or flaring or other things that we see a lot in the industrial industry. And then this last video is our intrusion analytic. So it's stating vehicle and person and, and our gas analytic working at the same time as those. So both fire and intrusion are set to come out at the end of this year is fire and early next year is intrusion. Another benefit of our system because it is an IR camera is we can visually verify tank fill levels. And this is another thing that operators really like um, because if the tank is acting funny and it's supposed to be filling, uh, they can visually see that it is. And so they like that. And on this image, you can actually see the two different product levels. And we had one client say, we thought we had two feet of water and we had two inches. So things like that where they can visually verify what's happening on the system. And then we caught a little leak here off the top of the tank. And that's a good example of maybe you would want an alert and a summary image of it but you don't necessarily need an alarm off of that. Um, now, if it continually leaks and we keep picking up leaks, um, that might be something to look into there. So we've talked a lot about the standard and the mini. So this here on the right is our explosion proof version of the mini. So if it's in a classified area or offshore, we would use this explosion proof version. And then on the left here is the mini on top of a, what we call a skid unit, um, but it's a self-contained unit. So this would be used in areas where you couldn't run power or fiber. So all the power and, and fiber, so everything goes up to the cloud and is saved in the cloud. So that's a good application for onshore or turnarounds, startups, maybe temporary locations for, for the GCI camera. And the micro is set to come out at the end of 2021. And this is either for a drone or a handheld. And so this is about the, side, the length of a highlighter. 
and it's probably two pounds, just to give you an idea of that camera. So again, we have the hyperspectral cameras that are patented technology to detect uh, what gas is leaking, identify the source, and quantify the gas. And all of these, this entire system and the software are built in our office in downtown Houston. So all the support comes out of there. And if there's any um, integration issues with the system and the software, that's all our team here, here in Houston. Um, it's all 24 by seven monitoring, no human interaction required. And that is pretty much it. We can open it Thanks, up for Jane. questions. Appreciate it. Let me just open this up here. Uh, first question, Oscar had asked, are there charts available for camera selection based on distance and area wideness? So I think that's a site assessment question. Yes, we don't specifically have charts, but basically, um, now we've been using Google Earth and because we can't go to sites right now, um, but we measure distances and we determine what levels of gas that they want to detect. Um, because our system is more sensitive to certain gases than others, that's how we pinpoint exactly where the camera should go. And so the spec sheets that we have um, show how sensitive we are to each different gas. And so that's something I can share with you, John, and you could also send out as well. Perfect. Uh, next is a question. You showed the picture about the heavy fog, but what does the system do if the beam is completely blocked? I don't know if that's a maintenance question or a combination. So let's go back here to this. So, I mean, we have not seen it be completely blocked with fog. If we do need line of sight, so if it's blocked by a building or something like that, we're going to detect it once it gets over that building. Okay. Um, we also, if there's something on the window, so we have a germanium window that's in front of the 12 lenses. So if, some, if there's an obstruction on the window, we have an alert that goes into the events panel and it will alarm saying there's an obstruction and I'm not able to detect. Okay, that's programmed into the AI? That is, I don't know, I don't think it's programmed into the AI. It's an alarm coming off the, the uh, off the camera. Lenses. Yeah. Okay. So there's another question about maintenance, and I th that maybe it's related to the lenses. What what about maintenance and calibration? What's required? So it's self-calibrating. It does a two-point calibration, one at four minutes and one at 22 minutes. Um, and so it's all self-calibrating. You don't need to worry about that. Also, if there's a gas release, you don't need to replace pieces and parts. Um, about twice a year, you will need to wipe the germanium window and then do a nitrogen purge and also check the cabling. So we have clients who do that themselves after we have trained them on it, or we have other clients who sign up for an optional maintenance package where we come and do it for them. Okay. Thank you. Another question is about cross interferences. You showed the list of gases that you can detect. What happens if you've got multiple gases and another another gas is leaking? Great question. So there are four gases that we cannot detect. Um, we can't speciate. So we can't speciate between methane and H2S. So if you have a gas leak with methane and H2S, we're going to alarm on one of the two. Whichever one you want the system to show is what we will show the detection of. 
Also, the other pair is propylene and ethylene. So we cannot detect the difference between propylene and ethylene. With that being said, if you have gases at the same time leaking, our first detection is what we are going to alarm on as long as it's above the threshold. So say you have methane and ethane at the same time leaking, but methane was first. We are going to alert on methane. And then if it moves and comes back, it will then alert on the ethane. If it's just sitting stationary there, once the one minute video is over of methane, it will alert then on ethane. Okay. There's another question. Have we tried to detect nitrous oxide? Nitrous, was that on my list? I don't have all 40 plus of these memorized. I didn't see it. <laughs> I can ask about that. I have not heard of that, but I've only, again, been with Rebellion for two years, so. So what's the, I guess that brings up the question, the process. If somebody's got an application, uh, it just requires an application review. The first step would be a quick application review to see if it's feasible. Is that the best Basically, process? Basically, we look at the absorption signature of that gas and see if it falls in our spectrum. Okay. If it falls in the spectrum, then we say, yes, we think we can detect it. Um, do you have a sample or can we come to your site? And then it's an additional charge on the camera to build the specific analytic. Okay. Is, the, is that analytic built at the customer site or do you take the data back to Houston and, and create there? We take the data back to Houston. Okay. Okay. I think that's got, let me just scan one more time. I think I've gotten all the questions. If anybody has any other questions, please shoot them under the question panel. Uh, Jane, we'll just give it a quick second to make sure we've got nothing else coming through. Sure. I think we've got it. I think this looks like we've got all the questions answered. So Jane, thanks very much for the presentation. Uh, so for the attendees, if you have any specific application questions, give us a call. You can contact me at 800-9-LESMAN. That's 800-953-7626. If you don't know who your account manager is, feel free to ask for me, and I'll make sure you get taken care of. You can also reach me at johng at lesman.com, and we'll answer whatever question uh, we can. If you need to know more about technologies we support, all the webinars that we do are posted both to our website and on our Lesman Instruments YouTube channel, so please check us out there. And I'd also ask for the attendees, if there are other topics that you'd like us to cover, uh, send me an email with a subject matter. We've got lots of product and process specialists. We love bringing this technology to people, so if you've got a suggestion for something that's on your mind or something you're curious about, shoot me a note at johng at lesman.com and we'll see about putting something together. At this point, if we don't have any other questions, uh, we'll conclude the presentation. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Have a fantastic and safe day. Jane, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.